All right, guys, back here on Southeastern 14 with Max Barr. We are doing our predictions for the other games, quote unquote, <laughs> the other games, Max, on Saturday. Look, we do some of these, um, you know, separate just because they're bigger games. It gives us a little more time to talk about them. But these games may not be talked about as much given kind of some of the matchups. But we'll see if we can find uh, some, some intriguing uh, storylines or maybe an upset somewhere along the way in these four. We'll find out. But for now... Uh, let's tell you about our friends at Bet Online. Uh, playoff time, of course, the usual suspects heading to Vegas this weekend for the championship. Our partner, Bet Online, your number one source for football odds, trends, uh, stats, lines, all that good stuff. Uh, everything from point spreads to hundreds of bets on everything from the coin cost to the color of the Gatorade, which I've got my bets in on those. It's orange, guys. It's orange. Um, you can have a bet online if you want to bet on orange or any of the other colors uh, of the Gatorade because it is your number one source. For your championship wagering, head to Bet Online and join today to get in on all the action. Uh, Bet Online, the game starts here. All right, here we go, Max. Let's get through these games here, and we start with LSU hosting number sixteen Alabama. Of course, Alabama coming off of the blowout loss at Auburn, uh, and now they've got to regroup and go play an LSU team who also got blown out in the midweek as they went to Tennessee there so the difference is that LSU is the home team so that maybe helps them a little bit in this matchup uh, if we go back to the previous one though these two teams played not even two weeks ago I think right or maybe it was two weeks ago actually um 10 11 days two Saturdays ago or something I, I don't know I'm like man these two teams yeah they just saw each other Alabama won that game 109 to 88 uh they you know I mean it was kind of an Alabama game right they had 14 threes they made 25 of their 28 free throws uh, they dominated the boards. Um, they had 23 assists in that game. I forgot about that. Uh, they shot 72% from two. So Alabama just did whatever they wanted to offensively against LSU the last time around. Um, you know, meanwhile, LSU had some balanced scoring, but and they did have 11 threes. But it's just, again, it's it's always the thing with Alabama is you know at any time they just go off and have a, a hot shooting performance. But really it was about more so what they did inside the arc last time against LSU. And I think that's what's, Interesting here, if you're trying to find paths for LSU, they clearly have to play better defense than they did last time around. I think they will because it's a home game. Um, and again, Alabama's coming off a tough spot. Like they just got run out of the gym by their, their biggest rival. So a little bit of an emotional letdown perhaps uh, is possible here. I think in Baton Rouge, something else LSU has done well, Max. We brought up the Alabama turnover uh, issues at times. Mm -hmm. LSU does force turnovers. So that would be something if you're trying to find uh, a path to victory here. For the Tigers, they've got to force turnovers. Um, and you mentioned, I know you're going to bring up, like when you look at the, you talked about the tempo in the LSU-Tennessee mm. game. That's something else that could play into this thing. You just read my mind, Blake. I just that thought was, about that. That was the main thing I'm thinking about the whole time during your analysis. Yeah, tempo, 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 guys. Um, this is a sneaky, sneaky, fast LSU team. And... They're coming off of a game where, yes, 20-point loss, but there's some confidence you can find in, in some stuff that they did. They out-rebounded Tennessee by a good margin. Toughness. What did we just see with Alabama? What was the biggest thing in this Alabama-Auburn game was how dominant Broom and Jalen Williams were. I am not by any means saying Will Baker's deny Broom. I'm just saying that when you're looking at paths to victory – this is an Auburn or an Alabama team that has been a little bit weak on the interior. And this is an LSU team who just kind of took it physically in the interior to a Tennessee team. Um, so you have that pass. But yeah, pace of play. This is an LSU team that's going to want to get out and run offensively. And they're going to chuck. They're going to shoot their threes as well. Just like, I mean, they might not shoot 48 threes like Alabama might, but they're, they're going to space the floor and shoot. So you can, uh, you can, see that kind of path Alabama coming off of kind of an emotional letdown they go into an LSU team that's going to play extra physical after what they just saw Auburn do to them and a team that can shoot you never know you never know crazier things can happen I have this spread at about a seven and a half for Alabama so probably about a three possession spread could be a close game I really want to be bold here um but I think as far as I'm going to go in terms of the bold pick is going to say if it's seven and a half or something like that, I would probably take LSU in the points because I think there's a good chance. LSU's played better at home like most teams, right? And again, this is an early start. 
Alabama's coming off the loss, which again, both teams coming off the loss, but there's it's different. LSU losing at Tennessee is different than Alabama losing at right. Auburn the way they did. And so um that that is something that would worry me a little bit if I'm an Alabama fan. And you know, LSU has said forced turnovers, but they haven't forced as many in SEC play as they did maybe more so earlier in the year. Um, so I still think Alabama is probably the pick for me just because like you said, the tempo and to just you can try everything you want to do, but they're just they're gonna find a way to play their type tempo. And so um that could be an issue for LSU. And I just feel like there's a lot that has to go right for LSU to win this game. But I also think look, LSU's kind of in desperation mode now. Not that I think they're gonna make the tournament, but this is kind of that stretch where we said if they're gonna find some wins to at least maybe make things interesting, perhaps this is the kind of game you have to win, knowing you go back to back road games next week at Florida and South Carolina. A lot of on the table here for the Tigers. I think they'll make it closer than people think, but I just I probably can't pick against Alabama given what we saw the last time these two teams played. Hey, look at LSU's next three home games. Okay, it's it's right now it's Alabama, and then their next two home games after this are Kentucky and Mississippi State. Okay, three, which would be quad one wins if we want to get into the net and all that, but. All three of those are prop most likely, barring crazy injuries or something. Uh, LSU will be a single digit underdog in those three, all three of those games. Yeah, I'm a betting man. I like to play probability and numbers. Those numbers are telling me LSU's winning one of those games. If you're yeah. catching three single digit spreads all at home against Alabama, Kentucky, Mississippi State, you're gonna you might steal one of those games. I'm not going to go as bold as to say it's going to be here against Alabama. I think there might be something with Mark Sears kind of looked a little bit banged up. He got pretty, pretty roughed up in that Auburn game. So maybe if we get like one of those late, oh, Mark Sears is not warming up 15 minutes before game time, we could be like, are you kidding me? But yeah, I'll, I'll go with Alabama here. But I think Blake and I are on the same page where this one could get a little bit close. I'm just telling you, I don't love this pick at all. There's part of me that thinks LSU just – Yeah. There's just something about, again, the spot, right? Yep. Like I, something about this one. Early start, all that, I I don't know. This is maybe a little it's bit of a tricky one for Alabama. Yeah. But you, you always say that about Alabama, and then again, it's Alabama. They can come out and hit 15 threes and win exactly. by 25. That's just – it's a wide range. But I keep an eye on this one. I would circle yeah. it just, yep. just in case. All right, this next one, maybe a little less um, – <laughs> interesting for for obvious reasons south carolina versus vanderbilt uh that one's at 1 p.m eastern on the sec network you know we saw the game cox against old miss and again it's kind of one of those games where old miss just wound up getting hot right they started making shots and that you know made this game a lot closer uh, than it was at one point but I just I look at this matchup here, right? It, it's all about matchups, and we yep. just saw Vanderbilt come off a game where, you know, they gave up a hundred and what? I mean, one hundred and nine. Is that what it was to Kentucky? Um, yep. And so, yeah, uh, not that South Carolina offensively does what Kentucky does, but it's just you can't really bank on. I think Vanderbilt may be defensively going into this matchup, knowing that South Carolina has done what this well this season. They've they've shot the three pretty well. And so if they get the same kind of open looks as Kentucky, they may not knock them down to that extreme uh, that the Wildcats did. But I'd be willing to bet if South Carolina gets the open looks with with all the different guys that we've seen make threes, it's a problem for the Commodores here because you could see South Carolina kind of explode for one of their best offensive performances because really all I've been about their defense, you know, over these past, well, really entire SEC slate. But as we brought up the stat, they haven't given up more than 65 points in six straight games. Uh, offensively, they haven't really hit that next gear necessarily. I mean, their highest scoring game in the SEC so far is 79 against Kentucky. I could see the Gamecocks hitting the 80-point uh, you know, mark here, just given what we've seen from Vanderbilt defensively. And I don't know, Max, you may have a better thought on this one than I do, but I just – it's all about matchups, we say. Mm -hmm. Like, we thought Kentucky was a bad matchup for Vanderbilt. Boy, I, I almost wonder – not saying I think it's going to be a 32-point game, but I almost wonder if, like, statistically South Carolina's a worse matchup uh, even than maybe Kentucky was so yeah I agree this this is going to be one of those one of those large spreads where it's 13 and a half 14 and a half yeah I doubt it gets up over 15 but it's going to be one of those those big double digit spreads and I and I agree with you when you look at the way that Vanderbilt can kind of stay in games and make things a little bit nasty a little bit grimy is free throw line uh 
they get to the line top three rate in the SEC. That's kind of the main thing they do offensively. And this is a South Carolina defense that does not foul. Like it's incredible how good they are at defending without fouling. And another thing that they do really well defensively is they stay in front of their man. They do not allow one-on-one penetration and late closeouts. It's not happening against this South Carolina defense. Um, So, yeah, I think the matchup is just brutal, especially you're going to have South Carolina coming out not in any sort of letdown spot. They went where you're in a game where you're winning by a lot and you kind of lose focus, take some uncharacteristic shots some bad plays and you let miss old miss back in the game. And you know, you kind of walk off the court with a little bit of a sour taste in your mouth. I mean, a win is a win. It's a great, you know, you want to walk away with a win, but if they were to blow out Ole Miss by 30 and it wasn't even competitive, you could be like, all right, they might kind of come sleepwalking into this matchup. No, nah, I don't think so. Um, yeah, bad matchup. You're going to get a large double digit spread. And I don't see, I don't see many reasons why, they shouldn't win by 15 plus. Yeah, that's the thing. If everybody's not getting to the free throw line, they probably got to make up for it with jump shots. And yeah. specifically, we keep talking about how South Carolina doesn't even allow you to shoot threes because of the pressure that they put on. But even if they do, here's Vanderbilt's percentages from three in SEC play 27%, 26%, 22%, 22%, 23%, 31%, 24%, 23%, 32%. Where are they going to score? Not ideal. Uh, they got to get to the free throw line. And again, yeah. to this point, South Carolina has not allowed that to happen for the opposition. So hopefully this doesn't turn into Alabama Auburn part two uh, for the free throw line. Cause if it does, Vanderbilt's got a shot, Yeah, uh, but I it's, it's going to be tough. So I think we're both picking South Carolina uh, in this one. All right. On to the next one, Arkansas versus Georgia, uh, 6 PM Eastern on the SEC network. And yeah, um, this is another one where it's just like, man, what a what a weird game based on kind of where these two teams are at right now. Because for Arkansas, I hey we, we did say and I, we still haven't looked up the stat, but we are going to find the stat before we um, maybe do our mailbag or something this weekend. But the the record for teams who are off in the midweek, um, Arkansas had the the midweek off, so now they come back after the LSU loss, got blown out in that one last Saturday. Come back home to play Georgia here. Um, they will have. Devo Davis officially back in the mix. And so that's an addition for the Hogs. Um, first time around these two teams played January 10th. So a long time ago, Georgia won that game by 10 in Athens. Um, you know, Arkansas went three of 21 from three in that game. They turned it over 15 times. Uh, Georgia just, I mean, I just kind of found a way to win. It wasn't the prettiest game, but uh, Georgia was just kind of, it was during that stretch where Arkansas just was not challenging. Like it was, you know, it became a close game, but Georgia was up 30 to 17 with like three minutes left in the first half. Um, and Georgia just kind of did what they wanted. This game's a little bit different because, you know, I would fully expect this to be probably a close spread max in terms of these two teams and where they're at. I'm going to be completely honest with you of the four games that we're previewing here. Remember we have the other three games, Florida, Auburn, Tennessee, A&M, Kentucky, the Zags, that's in separate videos. This is the one where I just want to go, just throw your hands up and be like, yeah. I don't know what we're going to get here. I truly don't with these two teams. I don't know what we're getting this one, Max. I'll tell you what we're getting. We're getting probably the two most inconsistent teams in the league playing against each other. And I think it's okay to kind of bank on that in our analysis. I mean, this is an Arkansas team that you don't, you have no clue what their intensity level, what their focus level is going to be. They could come out and, hold a team like Kentucky to 63 points, or they could come out and get blown out by 20 to LSU and let up 95. I, I have no clue what team we're going to get. Um, as for looking at like the numbers and how the the team styles match up against each other, it's a lot of the same. I mean, you, Georgia shoots the ball a little bit better from outside, um, and they take a few more, but then Arkansas will get to the line probably a little bit more, maybe some more mid-range twos with Tremont Mark and – stuff like that. So yeah, I think both teams have a little bit of a different offensive style, but both defensively do not rank high in the conference. Um, Arkansas, they don't have good rebounding numbers, but I think since Mitchell got into the lineup, they've been a little bit more stout down low with the defensive rebounding. Um, This game, I'm just kind of looking at, I think what now these teams are not 
in a national title contention, but just the idea that pops into my head is a lot of times you hear with the to win a national title, you got to get better in February. Like you have, you can't stay the same. You your team has to be improving. And I think what I'm what I'm looking for in this game, who's not laying down this year, and who's going to try to really make a push and, tr- and try to put together a few wins here in February. That's just what I'm looking for. I think we're going to get a spread within a basket. Either side just kind of depends on where the money falls. It's going to be a one possession spread for sure. I'm just kind of looking at who wants this, who comes out with energy and focus and who wants this because you can analyze it all you want. These are these are just two inconsistent teams that haven't really put together a full 40 minutes, uh, maybe at all this this conference season. So give me Arkansas. They're the home team. I don't trust this pick in any way, shape or form. Uh, both teams are kind of deflated, but if you think about it, Georgia actually may be a little more deflated. They've lost four in a row. Yep. Um, lost some games where think about they had the early big lead on Alabama, the overtime loss against Florida, even the South Carolina game. They were right there for a little bit, wound up losing by 10. Um, you know, didn't play well at Mississippi state. Although, as you said, when we did the reaction, they came back, made it a three point game. Just couldn't. Yep. Couldn't take it further. So, like, I feel like Georgia's to the point where they just every game when they get close, they just cannot find a way. And of course, I've expressed my reasons why I think that is just with the you know the nature of their limitations offensively. But yeah, I mean, look, it, this is this is a throw your hands up in the air and you know just try try to take your best guess on these two teams. So I'll take the home team as always in that um, scenario. So give me the Hawks. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go with the Hogs, but for different reason. I'm kind of banking on that week off uh system that yeah. we've got going just think you know you, you take a week off in in early february the hardest time of the season refresh mentally refresh physically and come out with a little bit more energy so that's what i'll, I'll take arkansas i think they're gonna i think they're gonna be the team that comes out a little bit more focused here all right and then there's this game missouri versus mississippi state 8 30 eastern sec network for this one i could say a lot of things about this game but i'm gonna kind of make it pretty simple take everything we said about why Texas A&M was a tough matchup for Missouri and just apply it to this game. Cause I, you know, because if you're trying to compare different teams, right, I'm not saying Mississippi state and A&M are the exact same team, but to a certain extent, there are some similarities there. Two teams that just don't shoot it well, which means they've got to do what they've got to make things happen inside the arc, which means the games get a little more physical. They can be good defensively. Um, they both rebounded well in terms of the offensive rebounding department. And all those things are just where Missouri struggles. Like they struggle to score. They struggle giving up rebounds. They struggle defensively. So, I mean, I, I just give you my pick right now. Like I'm picking Mississippi State. I just, for all the, again, we don't know Shawnee's status. So, again, we're doing this on Thursday. We don't know if he's playing. If he doesn't play, you know, makes it an even easier choice, um, probably in terms of the pick. Uh, curious to see what the spread is, Max, because. Really, I mean, as we mentioned, Missouri had kept a lot of these games close. They didn't against A&M because that was the East effect where he just, you know, he wasn't playing. They lose by 19. But if he plays, it's probably a closer game. You know, it it may wind up being a nine-point game or something. Um, So if he plays here and he's healthy, sure, I could see them making this interesting because I could see, you know, Mississippi State coming out and getting happy from three or all of a sudden those free throws they made against Georgia, they missed about 12 of them, um, and that keeps it close. But what else do I say here? I think this is just just a bad matchup, just like Texas a and was for Missouri. Yeah, Ken Palm has this as a six-point win for uh, Mississippi State, so that would imply when they're on the road, maybe take a half point, or they're, they're home, so maybe add a half point to that, maybe, you know, minus six and a half. But if, if Sean East is out, bump that up another two points, we could be seeing a, a spread get up close to 10 here in favor of uh, Mississippi State. And... There's, there's two sides to this coin here, Blake, and I want to know which side that you are – well, I already know which side that you are leaning more into, but I'll just – I'll try to provide some path for, for Missouri. And, yes, it's a tough matchup, but in another sense, they're playing – they're not – it's not exactly – but they're playing the same team again. You know, so it's like you can, you can take every mistake and everything you did wrong on Wednesday – and try to fix that for Saturday. It's not like you're playing Texas A&M, and then you got to go play. Uh, then you got to go play Kentucky, where it's going to be you're, you got to play for a whole new team. You can kind of you're kind of going to see a lot of the same actions and stuff like that, uh, especially defensively and rebounding. So 
maybe there's a path there for Missouri. They'll they'll come out and and not be so shocked physically. But if you don't have Sean East in this game, I, I struggle to find a find a path here for Missouri. And I, I don't know if Sean East is gonna play. Even if he does play, I'll go Mississippi State. I just think it's the anytime I just said in the reaction, anytime Missouri comes up against these physically imposing teams, they are going to struggle. They just they don't have the front court bodies for it this year. So uh, I'll go Mississippi State. All right, so we're picking all the games the same, and we're just gonna we don't we don't even have Chris's picks. We're just gonna say he's also picking them all the yep. same. So that way, all four of these games, we are gonna test the theory again, which was kind of broken in the Auburn Alabama game, and we started to break it a little bit more with the Southeastern fourteen kiss of death. So sorry, everyone, not even having fun with it, but we'll see if it makes a comeback uh, with these. Although Chris didn't officially give his picks, but maybe it doesn't work when he doesn't officially give them. Max, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. Appreciate you guys watching. As always, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button as well. Um, check out everything we got on the channel from basketball, football, baseball. It's all there. And, uh, again, if you're looking for the previews of the Florida, Auburn, Tennessee A&M, and Kentucky Gonzaga games, you can find those in other videos here on the channel. So appreciate you guys watching as always, and we'll talk to you again here soon at Southeastern 14.